Welcome back to FreePhotoshop.com and our guide on the Levels command. In the last tutorial you saw Levels in action, taking care of business with Lady Liberty. Now we're going to check out the free automated Levels commands as we seek to improve the brightness, the contrast and the colours inside these photographs I have on screen here. And I say photographs as in the plural because we have three images opened on screen here but they're all exactly the same photograph it's just that I duplicated the original in order to give us the free versions of it and that's going to enable us to apply the auto levels auto color and auto contrast commands to its own version of the image which is by the way a photograph inside the Adirondack Mountains in New York State I can't remember offhand exactly where it was taken but I can remember it being somewhere between Essex and Lake Placid just in case you wanted to know and what we've essentially got here is a landscape of trees coming down from the mountains and then those trees reflecting in this very still lake here in the foreground so what exactly is wrong with this image well I wouldn't say that it's an awful image or anything like that but we have got some problems with the contrast so we need to do something about that and to show you what I mean I'm going to zoom in here to the levels image and in case you haven't guessed these images are all named after the auto commands we're going to be applying to them hence the names levels contrast and color now I'm zooming in here to some of these shadows amongst the trees shadows which by my reckoning should be pretty dark but when we see them zoomed in at this scale we start noticing that if anything these shadows are blue they're not bright blue or anything like that but they are blue nonetheless I'm going to reset the view size to 15% so once again we're matching the other images we have on screen I'd also like to say that the photograph looks quite faded and that's a result of not having enough contrast either okay I'm going to select the levels image and then I'm going to come up here to the image menu select adjustments and then choose the auto levels command and straight away with what could have been just one action we've made a big adjustment to the image and with auto levels what we've done here is taken the darkest color in the image and made it black then we've taken the lightest color in the image and made it white then it stretched out all the brightness values in between to fill out the new spectrum between dark and light colors and it's done all this work inside each channel of the image so it's adjusted the red the green and the blue channels independently and formed the results we see on screen now if this jargon isn't really clear to you at this stage then that's okay that's just fine we'll be looking at more detail as to how this actually works in the next two tutorials all you need to know for now is whether or not you like the results of applying this particular command and I have to say that it's done a fantastic job of making this photograph look a lot more natural than it did before because when you're darkening the shadows and lightening the highlights you are by definition increasing the contrast which is what we wanted to do all along and I must also say that you don't need to know what's wrong with an image to be able to fix it. All you actually need to do is apply the commands, and I'm talking about the free auto commands here by the way, you just need to apply one of these free auto commands and then either give it the thumbs up or thumbs down depending on whether or not you like what you see. Okay, so let's move on to the contrast image. I'm going to select it and then come up here to the image menu, select adjustments and this time choose the auto contrast command okay so what's happening here is the same as what happened when we applied the auto levels command but this time we're not looking at it on a channel by channel basis we're looking at it from the composite view of the whole channel so the image as a whole and then making our adjustments from there next I'm gonna select the color version of our image and I'm gonna come back up here to the image menu once again select adjustments and this time choose the auto color command now as expected with a name like auto color what's going on here is the same as auto levels so it's making the shadows darker the highlights lighter in all three color channels but this time though it's also neutralizing the color inside the image by finding the brightness value it thinks should be mid-tone gray and mapping it to a brightness value of 128 which as it happens in the RGB color space is actually mid-tone gray and what it's trying to do here the auto levels wasn't is trying to keep the shifting colors to a minimum and you'll usually find out that more often than not this will be the best of the auto commands unless you're trying to remove a color cast 
but we'll be taking a more in-depth look at removing colour casts a little later on in the series. OK, so which version of this amazing photograph is the best? Well, personally, I don't think the contrast image is too great. It's certainly the most delicate of the three commands, with this particular image anyway. To me, it's between the colour and levels options. And I think I'd go for the levels command for this image. And just to show you why, I'm going to zoom in to the shadows, just like we did before. Now I'm going to come up here to the Windows menu, choose the Arrange sub-menu, and then choose the Match Zoom and Location command. And it's pretty evident that the Auto Levels command has done a much better job of removing those dark blues from the shadow detail. Auto Contrast didn't really touch them because it's not working on a channel-by-channel -channel basis, and on this occasion Auto Color isn't quite as remarkable as the Auto Levels adjustment because with the work that's going on with the midtones and trying to preserve color inside the image, there isn't as much scope for Auto Color to defeat casts of color like we have here inside the shadows of this image. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and zoom all of these images back out to the 15% view size. So, do we have a conclusive winner of the Auto Commands Awards, if we can call it that? Well, for this image, I'd say Levels. You might prefer Contrast or Color, and they certainly haven't done a bad job. In fact, they've both done very good jobs. But, I can still remember taking this photograph, and in my mind, the image should look more like the Auto Levels version than the other two. So, I'm going to stick with my original choice. Now, while these commands are all automatic, you do get a little bit of control courtesy of the fade command. I'm going to make sure that the levels image is active by clicking on the title bar, and then I'm going to hit Control alt z here on the PC, or Command-Option-Z if you're on the Mac, to undo the auto levels adjustment, and then I'm going to hit Control shift l here on the PC, or Command-Shift-L, that is on the Mac, to apply the auto levels command once again. Now because applying auto levels was the last command I used, I can come up here to the edit menu and select the fade auto levels command. Now I've got the option of fading back the auto levels edit, which is handy if you think the levels adjustment is a bit too harsh. And you've also got access to blend modes inside the fade dialog box. So for example, you could change the blend mode to luminosity and have auto levels only affect the brightness of pixels in the image so you're not going to be affecting the colours, or more accurately, the hue and saturation of the finished image. OK, I'm going to cancel out of here without making any changes to the photograph, and I'd say we've done a pretty good job of improving this image. But you know what? We could have done a far better job. If you're not content with the auto functions here in Photoshop, if you're wanting more control and more accuracy, and if you're wanting to get into some serious editing, some serious image manipulation and some serious colour adjustments, then you're in the right place. Next we're going to check out the histogram, such an important concept to manual levels adjustments that I've devoted two entire lessons to it. The first one is coming up next. Thanks for joining me here at freephotoshop.com and I'll see you in the next video.